All right, if everybody wants to grab their seats, we can get started so we can get me out of the way and the good stuff on, on, on the screen and everything everybody can learn about. All right, so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, I'm actually Jimmy Davis. I'm the mayor of the city of Bayonne, so if you're not from Bayonne. So I would like to welcome everyone to tonight's town hall meeting, which is all about the redevelopment of the former Texaco site at First Street and Avenue A. And I could give you a little background on that just in my personal life. I grew up in that neighborhood. I grew up right on 4th Street and the Boulevard, which is four blocks from that neighborhood. And that was my playground. And I could tell you when Texaco was there. And then I could tell you when Texaco left and I was still a young kid. And since then, it has been what it looks like now. So this is major for the city of Bayonne. But in my life, it's a transformation of the city because of what I've seen go on there and where we're going to go tonight. So, having grown up near there, I can tell you that the area of Bayonne was an industrial as it could be for close to 100 years. Kazchem, Baker Oil, Best Foods, which is where my father worked, and Texaco were all situated between 1st Street and 4th Street and Avenue A. A lot of families in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s were able to put their kids through college and make better lives for themselves working the blue and white collar jobs that the industrial plants offered. And then slowly, one by one, they all closed down and the jobs in our city disappeared. For close to three decades, most of these contaminated waterfront properties remained vacant and served as a daily reminder of our city, Bayonne's past. Things started to change in the past eight years. The Best Food site is now an Amazon center. The Cascam site is in the beginning of a staged residential and mixed use redevelopment. And now amazingly, we have the Texaco site, which is in its final stage of transformation from an ugly oil refinery, then vacant land, and now to a state-of-the-art 21st century movie production studio. As you will see in this presentation, this project actually brings Bayonne back to its roots because 100 plus years ago, Bayonne had one of the first movie studio facilities called Centaur Productions. Think about that. Over 100 years ago before Hollywood existed, the second movie studio was here in the city of Bayonne. As a kid, it would have been hard to convince me that in my lifetime, Bayonne would have a world-class golf course, an international cruise port, and a movie production studio that would rival or maybe even exceed anything in Hollywood. Think about it. Golf course, check. Cruise port, check. And now, Hollywood on the Kill Van Cull is about to become a reality. Tonight's meeting is, des is designed to provide an overview of how this project will be built, what it will look like when it is done, how it will be financed, the jobs it will create, and how it will impact Bayonne's economic and social landscapes. This is the first of what will be many public meetings as this redevelopment moves along. 1888 studios will end up being approximately 1.5 million square feet in size. We are going to open up with a presentation by several representatives of the developers redevelopment team. That will be, be followed by a short presentation by city representatives. After both presentations are complete, we will entertain questions from the public. So with all that being said, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Robert Benneke of Benneke Economics. Mr. Benneke, please introduce the developer's representatives and begin your presentation. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mayor. That's great. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Bob Benneke. I'm a financial consultant, and I am the financial redevelopment consultant to Togus Management and to 1888 Studios. It's great to be here. Um, you will have a great team and great pictorials and a great background presented to you tonight. I'm actually the local flavor. Uh, I was born about six towns north of here, 15 minutes. I was not born in a hospital. We grew up poor. I was born in a basement of a doctor's home. So we bring the local flair, and these other folks bring the world-class flair. Um, I taught college for about 40 years. I've written four textbooks on finance, and I also served on an advisory committee for the Builders Association of the Southeast U.S. and served as a board of directors on a major uh, construction company in the late 2000s. Um, with us tonight, we have our architect from Gensler, Michael White, and his associates. He'll introduce everybody. He's great. Gensler's the largest architectural firm by size. They'll introduce themselves. We have Jim White, who is a world-class engineer. I'm not going to extol his virtues, but he brings such a unique perspective to construction and construction management, and he'll tell you how he's going to pull this fantastic project off. We have Sills Cummins, who is, the, my mind, the best transactional law firm in the state. Of course, the city has their own lawyers as well. Then we, of course, have Oceanic, who are experts in production and studio operations. And they're going to go through all of the jobs that are created and how a studio operates. Currently, the site is about 70 plus acres. There's a lot underwater. It's 58 acres in total. And Togus and 1888 Studios has been at the fill um, stage and the property acquisition and the site work stage for about a year and a half or more, almost two years. They've actually invested over 50, 60 million dollars in the site of their own money already. So it's not one of these things where they're playing on the comm or they think they're going to build something and then the money will flow afterwards. They're putting their money, their hard money, into the dirt as we speak. And Jim, Jim White is going to um, go through that as well. As you can see on the slide, Turner, Turner Construction is going to be the lead contractor. They're going to have the boots on the ground, and it will be a, a union, 100% union job, and that's what we are all committed to. And that the union is going to be a key component to getting this job done on time. Finally, the, the site pays approximately $1.3 million in taxes today. Um, one of the, the problems with pilots sometimes and payment in lieu of tax programs is that everyone thinks it's like New York City where you get a tax abatement and your taxes go down. Well, that's not the case in New Jersey. You'll always pay at least the $1.3 million. And when Mike, Mike Hanley from the city goes through that, he'll explain some of the technical details of that. But it is going to be ramped up from the $1.3 million level today towards $7 million when the uh, production facility is operational. Um, in terms of the city folks, just want to uh, reach out and just give a shout out to a few people. Number one are the two fellows up in the, the, uh, the crow's nest up there. They, they helped with the audio, the visual, everything. Brandon uh, especially and uh, his buddy Paul. And then Tim Craig, who is the head of security for Bayonne High School, did a great job letting us in, showing us around. Everything was great. And of course, the police officers who, who were here are, have been great. So I just wanted to make sure that they got their uh, just credit because these, these PowerPoints and this electronics is difficult to pull off, and, and they really did a great job. So we'll get to the question and answers uh, period. Just remember a couple of terms it's a production facility. It's not a movie theater, it's not any of that. This is a production, a production facility with at least 2,000 jobs as we go forward and everything is, is up and running. It's gonna be over 2,000 construction jobs as well, and that's huge for the city. We go, we're going to be going from $1.3 million in taxes all the way on through to towards $7 million, and up from there, by the way, as everything gets um, I'm settled out, uh, in other words, up and running. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, Michael White from Gensler. He's the lead architect. And then you'll have a presentation from Jim White and Brian Livesley from Oceanic, who's going to 
absolutely do a great job in explaining all of the production facility ins and outs, and then we'll go from there for the city side. Uh, I am backup for the projector, so if anything goes wrong, I'll be jumping in. That's sort of my principal role tonight, and then I'll be back to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, and over to Michael. Thank you, Bob. You have the room. I'm going to step up here real quick. As an architect, I want to be close to the drawing, so I'm going to get a little bit up here on this uh, screen. So as, as Bob mentioned, um, Gensler is uh, one of the large architectural firms in the world. My colleague John Wiedner and I both live in LA. Uh, we're considered the firm's experts and, and one of the world leaders in uh, studio design. This is what we do. This is what we've been spending our time doing. We've been involved in some of the most state-of-the-art studio designs uh, in the world. And I have to tell you, this is a project that we are all so excited to be associated with, so excited to be involved in. It's an honor for us to be here. We also are with our uh, New Jersey office. Gensler has a New Jersey office. Uh, our local New Jersey office will be the, the team that we'll be working with uh, jointly to produce the drawings, work locally with the jurisdictions to get permits, documents done, make sure that the local authorities and the design that we're doing is in keeping with the, the, the local community. So transformation, um, so much of what we're talking about is trying to find the balance between the historic significance. Uh, Mr. Mayor talked a little bit about the, the kind of this rich history of Bayonne, this rich history of the film studios within New Jersey, and the importance of us as designers of having an enormous respect for the local community, that local rich history, and also juxtaposing the idea of building a state-of-the-art uh, production facility for, for movies. Um, this gives you some of the statistics about the site. Um, th this is an amazing opportunity to see a site that used to look like this being transformed into a, a beautiful uh, site where you have uh, a workforce of people working. Uh, we always think of the film studios as being places where stories are told, where dreams are made, where films are produced, where engineers animators, storytellers, uh, fabricators, and so forth are building the movies of the future. This shows you a picture of the site today to show you some of the progress that the, the owner has already made on the site, the investment of the site. Uh, from an architectural perspective, this is a beautiful site, the beautiful Bayonne Bridge right at the foot of the building, uh, at the foot of the site. Uh, the, the water surrounding is just a great opportunity to really embrace the kind of environmental nature of, of the location. Uh, this shows you a, kind of an overview of what the project will look like. Um, there's obviously a huge investment uh, in a public park at the base of the uh, bridge that you see there in the green, which connects to the adjacent public park. Um, so there's this idea of continuing the waterway, uh, the waterfront walkway all the way around the site. The trees you see along the water will be a public access point that I'll go into a little bit more deeply. Uh, the scaling of the buildings are three-story buildings, which is in keeping with the neighborhood. And I'll talk a little bit about how we've scaled the site planning to the grid of the city, so it's something that's in keeping with the grid of the city. Uh, this shows you, again, up in the upper left, uh, what used to be there, upper right is what is there today, and then the, the vision for the future. Uh, and then I'm going to try to talk a lot about what was the inspiration for us as architects. How do we build something that's appropriate to this community, it's appropriate to this city, that's respectful of the past, but also really balances this idea of the future. So I'll talk a little bit about the, the, the ideas behind that. Uh, Mr. Mayor already talked about the, the idea of Thomas and Ed Edison's investment in creating the first motion picture camera back in 1888. 1888 becomes an important marker in time for us, hence the name of the studio being uh, called 1888. We think that's a really important, uh, respectful way of honoring that past, that local past here in New Jersey, and having that become something significant as the name of the studio. Uh, there, there's also this ongoing um, development of the Black Mariah, the Centaur Studios, uh, the, the eight studios in New Jersey in uh, 1911, in this idea that New Jersey was actually ahead of LA, and New Jersey was actually ahead of Hollywood in this. And this film studio for us is an opportunity to kind of really bring that leader within the industry back into Bayonne. So let's talk a little bit about the concept design. You're going to be talking about really this balancing of the, of the respect for the past, but with also this vision for this cutting edge future of film production. Uh, you'll note this is the site plan of, of the property. 
One of the things that we spent a lot of time doing was looking at the, the grid of the city, the scale of the city. So you notice as you come from 2nd Street down to 1st Street, the kind of patterning of that kind of scales the site in a way that we thought was appropriate. The idea of extending Avenue A uh, as, a, as a line of sight deep, deep into the site. So you start having a tree-lined experience of, of landscape features that kind of extend Avenue A into the site. Then, of course, as I mentioned, the tree-lined water walkway. This shows you a highlight of that. Again, the green park down at the bottom, which will be a public park. The yellow line that you see running around the site will be a public waterway, a walkway that runs along the edge of the water. The blue lines are the public access points from the public street into the public park, and then up on the north um, to the west um, to, to access the point at that. We thought that was really important that the site became something that allowed this thoroughfare uh, and allowed the kind of views and the beauties of the park and the beauty of the water uh, as, as being integral to the design of the site. Uh, this shows you another view of it. You'll notice that along the edge, let's see, I think I can get a, a pointer going here. Along the edge, these are those three-story buildings. I'll zoom in a little bit closer later. But we thought it was really important to have something that was respectful of the view out to the water that kind of wraps around so the site really kind of acknowledges that. The idea of having Avenue A coming into the site, we thought that was really important, this idea of, 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 of acknowledging the kind of uh, street pattern of the city. Uh, and this shows you the, the entry gate. So this is at the corner of Avenue A and 1st Street. So this will be this kind of ceremonial entrance. And any of you have been to Hollywood and seen the film studios, there's this idea of celebrating the act of this magical world that happens back in the studios where, where films are made and uh, things are created, uh, things are built. So this shows you, and you'll start to see that we're starting to take on a little bit of an art deco flair. We thought that that was really important to be kind of nostalgic. If you look at the historic film studios that were all built back in the 20s, they all had this art deco feeling. We thought that was particularly appropriate for this site because so much of the art deco styling is based on the nautical themes uh, that you see as the boats are passing around this site. We thought that was a really important touch point. This shows you the view of Avenue A, again, the ceremonial entry gate, kind of lands landscaping along the public street, this idea of creating a nice urban edge, sensitive edge with the landscaping, uh, some iconographic, um, interesting features of the main gate, and then some historical markers with uh, water towers and things of that nature that add some character to the, to, to the space. As you start uh, looking at a little bit of a different view, again, the kind of emphasis on landscaping and scaling and trying to fit the buildings into the community. This is a nice view of the three-story um, office space, which is really the production space. This is where animators will work, engineers will work, storytellers. This is where they'll write the stories, storyboard the movies uh, in these buildings that happen up front. This is one of the sound stages where they actually will be filming and shooting. This is where sets will be built. Uh, and fabricated within in the film uh, operating back within the sound stages. Then as you start moving in, this is the main entryway. This is the kind of the extension of Avenue A into this nice tree line. The idea that you continue this city street idea with uh, sidewalks where pedestrians can walk down in between the trees and the buildings. This idea of having indoor and outdoor spaces, so healthy environments for people to, to work where they have the opportunity of stepping out and getting fresh air. This idea of kind of uh, lots of natural light into the space, which we thought was really important out of respect for the, the workers that will be working in these buildings. And again, the connection between the um, office buildings and the, um, when I say office, I mean the studio production buildings and the actual sound stages themselves. Uh, and again, here's where you start to see the real emphasis on the kind of art deco look and feel, which we thought was really appropriate to the scaling of the site, which is you have three-story buildings, um, very art deco in nature, and again, this kind of nautical theme that is respectful of the boats that are passing by around the site. Uh, and again, the investment in detail. These are great buildings. These are really high quality buildings. Uh, as architects, this is a dream for us to be able to work with a client that's investing uh, uh, and is respectful of the history, is really trying to, to invest and do something quite nice. You can see the, the kind of sensitivity around signage and namings of the buildings that will be historically significant. The idea of the kind of numbering sequence around the sound stages uh, and the level of detail and fenestration uh, and thought 
thoughtfulness about landscaping and outdoor and indoor spaces um, around the site we think is really quite significant. You'll see in some cases there's these ideas around celebrating the movies uh, through posters that are being produced within this idea of celebrating what's happening within the studio um, by showcasing those movies. Uh, this kind of pulls back a little bit and you show, shows the site again with the, the kind of waterfront walkway up going around the edge. And then uh, I think Jim White is going to get up and talk through a little bit more further details on the delivery of the project. And I think Brian is also going to talk a little bit about the kind of details of uh, the group. So here's Jim. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Jim White. I'm the head of development for uh, the 1888 Studios. 40-year um, veteran, uh, developing projects throughout North America, previously um, to coming on board with Togus. I was with Oxford Properties where I developed uh, Hudson Yards. Um, uh, in addition to the latest Google headquarters in New York and um, worked on a 160-acre uh, studio development in Santa Clarita, California. Prior to that, I was with uh, Brookfield Properties, where I ran uh, Brookfield's uh, development across North America, involved in various projects uh, from Saskatchewan to Toronto to all over the U.S. And I've had the uh, privilege uh, to work on very large-scale projects uh, over my 40-year career. and. Um, I'm very excited to be part of such a transformative project such as this. When I first saw Bergen Point, and I had uh, met with, uh, you know, the uh, group from Togus, I was enormously excited about the opportunity because I see the beauty in the location and what it can actually be. Um, when you look back at some of the slides that were shared previously when it was in its heyday with the, uh, you know, the oil refineries and what it had turned into and the potentials of what it will be when we get this done. Um, but the most important thing that I'd like to share with you is that any project of this magnitude um, requires uh, a team. And, uh, you know, Turner Construction will be acting as our general contractor. I've been, I started my career out with Turner some 35, 30 years ago. Um, I'm proud to say that I am a huge supporter, as is Togus, in Union, and this will be a 100% Union uh, project. And I see a lot of you guys out here really looking forward to working together with you guys. This would be a great boost to, uh, to, bear, you know, to the area. Uh, I think, uh, to, you know, right now the projections are we'll hit some, something close to 2,000 Union jobs over the course of this project. The uh, total volume right now is uh, 700 million, uh, so that should uh, keep us all paying our mortgages and taking care of our kids' colleges' tuition for quite some time, hopefully. Um, you know, to date, what we've been doing is bringing the site up uh, to grade. Um, there, because of the existing conditions that have gone out, uh, there's been some radiation going on for quite some time with Chevron and Texaco. So to date, we've been brought in about 400,000 cubic yards. Um, what we've tried to do here, or what we are doing, is expending the dollars to bring in clean material. The site, you know, as it existed, and you know, I guess back in the day when we didn't realize the impact and effect of some of, uh, you know, the oil. Um, Chevron had been doing some remediation that dates back to, you know, the 1960s. Uh, half the site had been, you know, already has an RAO on it, and we're working now to complete that, you know, on the other side of the site. We're about halfway there. We're going to bring the site up to, you know, the FEMA floodplain for this area is between 13. We have three different elevations on this site, 13, 15, and 16 and a half. We're going to bring it up to 17 and a half. Surround the site with a uh, retaining wall to uh, resist any type of sandy type occurrences. Um, we're working together with the federal government right now to get it remapped, and we're on target to have that completed by September. But clearly, most of the operations that have been going on to date are just bringing in um, quite a bit of fill here. I just, I'm sure a lot of you guys out here understand 700,000 cubic yards of clean material um, is a bit of a lift, and uh, you know we've invested. Um, because there were options with the DEP, but we, we opted to go with clean material that would allow the site to be residential. So it's about 
as clean as you could possibly get. And, and so, you know, our dedication to the environment and maintaining and continuing on to, you know, uh, create a healthy location for our uh, residents is, 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 is paramount here. Um, we will be complete with the fill operations by the end of this year. We're going to start break ground for the foundations in uh, early February. Very fast schedule, we're gonna keep you guys really busy because we've got 17 different buildings that we're constructing, total of 1.5 million square foot, including a five-story parking garage. So uh, the idea here is hit the ground running. We wanna pull the trigger, we're working on with Turner. We got a great team with Turner. You know, Turner's been here in Jersey for a good sight of time. And uh, looking forward to working together with a lot of the folks that I see here. I've met quite a few of the union uh, representatives here, and it's a pleasure to meet you gentlemen, and really looking forward to working together and having the support. As you guys know, this is a team sport, and without uh, the support of all the local labor, and primarily, hopefully, out of Bayonne, um, really looking forward to realizing a great, successful project here. So. Um, with that, uh, the expectation is we're going to be done in 25 months, quite a, pretty quick, um, and so we're going to need a lot of support. And uh, it seems like by the attendance in this crowd, we can count on that. So uh, thank you very much, and thank you for your support, and looking forward to seeing you guys into the future. Brian, you're up. Want me to click through? This one on? You guys hear me? Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, my name is Brian Livesey. I'm the CEO of the Oceanic Studio Group. Um, our company specializes in the design, development, and operational management of studio facilities here in North America. Um, I myself have spent 30 plus years in the film and television business. Um, I've uh, 20 of those years, I was a production designer. For those of you who don't know what a production designer is, that's, I was in, in charge of building all the sets, the scenery, designing it all, and getting it in front of the camera, in charge of the look and feel of any of the film and television shows that I worked on. It's one of the main creative departments in the show, working with directors, producers, and whatnot. Um, at a facility like this, what we have coming in every day are uh, some of the largest content creators in the world, names that we've all heard of, names that we all know, and many of whom we probably all subscribe to. Marvel, Disney, Fox, Sony, Warner Brothers, Universal Studios, uh, and the like. Long before I got to be a production designer, uh, I started as a, uh, my, my gig in the entertainment business as an apprentice carpenter. And, you know, as an apprentice carpenter, what that really means is that you spend a lot of time loading and unloading trucks, a lot of scenery, a lot of lumber, and then at the end of the day, a long day, I get handed a push broom and get told to sweep the sound stages. Spent a lot of time moving, moving sawdust around, getting ready for the next group and coming in. I tell you all of this to really bring into focus the jobs that happen inside of a, uh, a studio facility. We are, the, we are the arena by which all the work happens. Um, everything in the studio is geared toward production efficiency. The people come in, somewhere upwards between two and 3,000 people on any given day will show up to the site to work. Um, and they'll be working in the mills, the offices, the flex spaces, certainly the sound stages. We have production logistic areas uh, around the campus, as you see with the trucks and um, back lot areas. Um, every single one of those jobs is required by every single production that shows up whether it's marvel with the big you know avengers 17 shows up or whether it's a very small fox features fox searchlight show that shows up we need carpenters we need you know plumbers we need electricians we typically call plumbers in our business special effects guys but we have hairstylists and makeup artists and wardrobe people camera 15 different types of camera assistants, directors, assistant directors, production office staff. All of these things really, it's the nuts and bolts of production. From day one, from production one, to the very last production that will ever run through this facility, every single production will hire those people to show up, build the sets, tell the stories, put those stories online for us all to see and enjoy. 
the jobs really are, are the trade craft. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't emphasize enough that the most magic thing about the film and television business, there's no magic. It's you, it's us, it's me. It's people working, building things, putting the scenery in front of the cameras, putting the scenery, from, taking them from the mill, putting them in the sound stages, setting it up, lighting it, shooting it, tearing it all down, putting it in a dumpster, taking it back off site, waiting for the next group to come back in. It's an, it's an incredible environment. It'll be an incredible boon, I think, for, for Bayonne, for all the people here. We see um, so much of the work that happens inside the facility bleeds out into the outside of the facility. Inside the facility, there's lots of work happening, very focused, specific work. Getting out into the community, we're going to see those same two to 3,000 people a day showing up here to come out into the community, go to restaurants, stop at grocery stores, buy gas, um, everything about this facility is going to drive workforce into it. All the, the productions are clamoring for this type of facility, especially in this region and in, in New Jersey. Certainly proximity to New York is fantastic, but it's uh, great to be in New Jersey, back home where this really started in the United States. I know that we're going to talk a little bit more later. I'll be happy to answer more questions about you know, jobs, how this works, what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. But essentially, we're going we're gonna to show up, unlock the doors, invite them in, kind of cater to them while they're here, and send it back out. Well, hopefully, we'll have some good questions later. I'll talk to you then. Thanks. So, we have put together a list of community benefits to take off on what uh, Brian and a little bit of what Jim was just saying. We're going to have and have promised the city a job fair for both the construction jobs uh, to the extent that Turner wants us to help recruit local employees. We're also going to have a job fair for um, production employees and permanent employees as the studio production facilities open up and for some of those many jobs that Brian just mentioned and more that he might get into if you have any questions. In addition, we're going to have some educational components for the community. At the planning board hearing, we mentioned that we're going to have an educational component um, and that will help educate the community, have some sort of school involvement and the like. Uh, that's not a specific requirement, but we need to do that to help uh, the city um, move the project forward. We have approximately 6.15 acres of space that we're dedicating back to the city out of the 58 acres. That's approximately 10% of the site that's buildable will actually be dedicated back to the city. And that's some of the things that Michael pointed out with the walkway and with the open space. Again, the studio, as Jim pointed out, is scheduled to open sometime in early 2025. Depends on weather and how we come out of the ground in, in February, but we're confident that that's going to happen. We also have a descriptive of, this, of the site, some of the things that we're going to do. We're improving Avenue A. Um, again, the planning board requires some flooding mitigation at Avenue A, the extent and scope of that being worked out by Jim Turner and his crew and of course the engineers of PSNS. So that's another very important element. Um, and I just wanted to point out, in addition to the environmental remediation that we're undertaking, we're also shoring up the entire waterway itself so that it's a resilient site. And as Jim noted, we're raising the site above the required uh, EPA, DEP um, floodplain requirements. We will then have an elevated site of well over 12 feet from where we started from two years ago, let's say, and that'll happen within the next six months or so. <clears throat> and again, we're going to have a um, total union job. And one of the goals that we have for the future, I think the mayor pointed this out, is that Collins Park sits just on the other side of the bridge as the ramp um, elevates, and we're trying to have a way to connect Collins Park with the movie studio park or open space, if you will. So there's connective tissue between the entire waterway walkway and Collins Park, which we think is pretty important. And that's all part of, part of the public benefit that we're undertaking. And, and as we intro introduce Mike Hanley, who's um, 
renowned as the best financial advisor for cities in the state of New Jersey. Does a great job for the city, protects the city. And just so you know, the city of Bayonne this past year actually completed, as far as my research shows, the year of the highest surplus in about 50 years in Bayonne on any type of basis. And that's attributable to the mayor's financial team, Mike, Donna Maurer, who's the CFO, Joe Bauman, Jay Coffey, who's here tonight, and their legal team as well. So we're going to be investing. The sponsors are investing $700 million in direct uh, construction costs, as Jim pointed out, plus the total project costs will be around $900 million. And if there's any cost escalation in there, it'll be added on top of that. The project, again, will increase taxes. Today we're paying $1.3 million, and we have at least 2,000 permanent jobs, and as Brian pointed out, two to 3,000 on a daily basis circulating through the site for those various um, programs and those various employment opportunities that we're going to have. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and uh, we'll be back for any questions. Here's Mr. Mike Hanley. Uh, thanks, Bob. And uh, my name is Mike Hanley. I work for the city. Uh, my firm is called NW Financial, and we represent municipalities all over the state of New Jersey and around the country. And we're here tonight because this is a totally unique project, and we want to do this in front of the city and have as many people participate as possible because there are enormous potential benefits here. There, You don't see projects that are nearly investing nearly a billion dollars in a city and producing over 2,000 jobs potentially for the residents of the city and the people in this region. Um, so we're here for the jobs, we're here for the capital investments. The, there are going to be over $200 million of payments to government entities during the term of this pilot project, and over $130 million of that will go to the city of Bayonne. It will be one of the largest taxpayers in the city, and the number of employees on this site will exceed any other non-government or healthcare entity within the city. Um, but we, are, we have to participate in this project, and that's not uncommon in redevelopment projects generally, and I would say of this scale, but there are almost no redevelopment projects of this scale. This is a really special opportunity for the city of Bayonne and Hudson County. The term of the pilot will be 30 years here. The, we are being asked to issue a bond that will be secured by the pilot payments that are part of this project. The, it will be additionally secured by a direct pay letter of credit from a bank acceptable to the city. So to the extent payments have to be made, in the event the developer can't make those payments, a, a letter of credit will make them on their behalf from a, a credit-worthy bank. We also are going to receive, at the beginning, nearly $4 million of pilot payments. It will be one of the biggest taxpayers in the city from Jump Street. And those payments are required on a per square foot basis, regardless of revenue coming into the project, which is also unique. Pilots are usually connected to revenue. We have minimum amounts of payments based on square feet built. And that goes on throughout the term of the pilot and you can see it increases annually. The unpledged line starts at $2.70 a square foot and eventually gets to over $6.50 a square foot. The project will be paying from almost $7 million in payments up to $31 million in payments that will generate $400 million that are invested in the city of Bayonne. All of those payments will go into taxing entities or be used to repay debt that is associated with waterfront and infrastructure improvements that accrue to the people of the city of Bayonne. 
So we think this is a tremendous financial opportunity. We think it's a tremendous jobs opportunity. And we're turning in a site that is producing little or nothing for the city now into an economic generator for the whole region. Thanks, Mike. That's great. So, so the economic generator, right, that's um, $200 million a year. There's something called direct, indirect, and induced benefits. In New York City, they did a, a pretty large study just before the pandemic. I won't bore you with the details, but we actually um, pulled back on our economic analysis. I did it personally with uh, three PhDs, and we came up with about $280 million of direct, indirect, and induced benefits for the first 24 months uh, on an annual basis that the studios open. So to give you an idea, right now, five minute drive away from this studio, if you take five, five, a five minute drive, go over the bridge to Staten Island, or up Broadway Avenue A, Avenue C, there's 950 private sector jobs today. 950, that's it. You can double the number of jobs on this site within the next three, four, or five years, depending on how long it takes to get the, the production studios operational and how all of the programs go that Brian talked about. So I think that concludes our program. I just do want to mention that we do have uh, legal counsel here. Again, Sils Cummins, um, Cecilia Lassiter from Sils Cummins, who's the lead attorney on our side. Uh, that's the developer side, and Jay Coffey and Joe Bauman, who are the lead attorneys on the city side, together with a fellow named John Wisses Calla. So if there's any, any other people that want to speak, if not, we're just going to open up the questions. And uh, I think Michael will probably be one of the key answerers, if that's the right word of the question. So have at it. I'll hand off the microphone, and we'll go from there. So anyone just like to come up here where the suits are, or down this aisle where the, the hats are? <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? Good. My name is Jacqueline Weimer, and I'm one of the council members here in town. So I have a couple of questions for you, and Mike, perhaps you will help me to answer these. So a 30-year pilot's pretty significant. Um, question one is, what bank is underwriting the pilot should it default? So the pilot... There are different pieces of the pilot. The pledge portion of the pilot, which is the debt we're issuing, will have a direct pay letter of credit from a bank that we have not yet determined, but that is satisfactory to the city. So that will be responsible for the pledge side. The unpledged side is a lien on the property. So we are going to have a $4 million tax payment that is secured by $800 million of property value. Okay, and I understand that. So that's, that's pretty good math. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna go with, I'm gonna go with that. That's pretty good math. Um, okay, that, that's marvelous. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, my next um, <clears throat> question, comment is, and I, and I apologize because I feel terrible. I have my back to everybody else, but okay. Um, so my, my next question for, for everyone, I think everyone would like to know this or, or I'm, it's important to me for everyone to hear it. I'm ecstatic that this project is going to use 100% of union labor. I think that we have some of the most talented, most well-educated. We put a tremendous amount of time and effort into our local unions, and I am overjoyed to see that that's a project and something that was approved. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> Second, I'm going to ask for a favor. You have, you have, because <laughs> I'm also good at that. You have already recognized that you are getting some of the most um, highly sought after property um, on the East Coast, right? The proximity to New York City is marvelous. The access to the property is going to be terrific. And you get to spend the rest of your days with all of us. Does it get any better? Um, I would love to see even a small amount of space dedicated, because it's, it's obvious that you're, it's important to you to be a part of the community, but I'd love to see a small space dedicated to 
our schools or to our nonprofit groups where perhaps they might have it for their performances. To, to have a small space dedicated for our children to look at that, to something to aspire to, to get to, um, and maybe, maybe they might have a summer job there. Maybe they might, you know, it's something for them to look to do. It's a small space that we don't yet have available. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it, it's just something that would add tremendously to the community. We'll, we'll certainly take that back to ownership. That's not going to be a problem. But we okay. have to remember that in terms of the space, that we do have liability issues, but we have promised apprenticeships, educational programs, and the like. And whatever we can do, provided that the overall scope of the theater and the liability issues are, are sacrosanct, uh, we're certainly going to work with you. We're, we're going to have a job fair. Uh, yep. we're, we're definitely going to have some sort of an apprenticeship style program if we can, and we're certainly going to have some sort of educational component with apprenticeships, and if we can work it out where there's an annual performance or something like that, we're definitely going to do that because sure. that helps everybody. Well, I appreciate that. I do, and, I, and just your consideration is, is tremendous, but I, I bet you if you work with that same insurance company that's going to underwrite your bond or your insurance policy, they'll give you a great rate on a potential liability. <laughs> plan as well. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Anybody else like to speak? Yeah, come on up. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Joe Ryan. I'm the public information officer for the city of Bayonne, and I'm also the city's historian. I wanted to thank you for being very respectful of the city's history as a place where the film industry started. I think it would be a great opportunity to name some streets in the studio complex after the Centaur Studio or the Horsley Brothers, people you know, who are very much involved in starting the film industry. And also, I think there'd be a good possibility for you to consider naming streets after uh, the actors from Bayonne, Sandra D and Frank Langella. Sandra D was you know, very big in the 50s and 60s, and Frank Langella is you know, still performing today in films and on television, and perhaps even after Nathan Lane, who's from Jersey City, if you wanted to you know, widen the, the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so how many streets are there together, uh, all together in the project that uh, exists beyond the extension of Avenue A? That's, a, that's great suggestions, yeah. Yeah, th thank you so much for bringing that up. It's an excellent idea and something that the design team and the brand design team and the naming is, if you noticed one of the buildings that I highlight there, we'd called it the Edison building out of respect for that. I think the full intention is for us to kind of reach deep into the history of Bayonne, the filmmaking, the actors, the movie stars, producers, directors, et cetera, who come from Bayonne and try to figure out ways of integrating that into either building naming or street naming within the studio lot. So yeah, like, it's a great idea. And we, we're at the beginning stages of thinking that through. Great. Thank you very much. It's a great suggestion. Thank you. And all of these community ideas, and there's probably going to be others, we want to hear them and we want to work with the community to make this a true uh, jewel. Just like Hollywood did with their studios, we want to do the same thing with the Bayonne Studios and 1888 Studios. This, about 15 years ago, someone once told me that if you don't work with the community, your project isn't going to be as successful. And we have all around this table, from Jim to Mike to Mike White to everyone, Joe Bauman, everyone has worked with a community and with a community focus on this project and quite frankly, all the projects we work on, whether it's mutually or whether it's separately. So we're, we're going to be there and that's why our, our last slide is thank you. We will work together and that's what we want to do. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Paul D'Angelo. Uh, I'm a resident of, of uh, Bayonne. I'm a movie actor. I used to star on ABC. I write, produce, direct. I own World Entertainment Broadcasting Systems. And uh, I was actually purchasing uh, Tyler Perry Studios. Deal fell through, not on my part, but didn't work with them well. So, But anyway, I'm really happy, man, you guys are coming to Bayonne. I think it, Bayonne really needs this. I think it's going to be a real huge success. Uh, I'm so excited about it. Years ago, I was bringing in um, 
Universal. I brought a whole bunch of people in down the military ocean terminal at the time. I was having $1.5 billion more or less dedicated to the uh, military ocean terminal at that time. And uh, for some reason, Jimmy wasn't involved in it. None of the guys were at the time, but it didn't happen anyway. Uh, but at this point, I think this is going to be really good. I know it's really going to work out re really well. Um, any assistance that you guys may need that I could help in any way, all my doors are open. Owning World Entertainment Broadcasting Systems as well, too. Yeah. And uh, I w there was one thing I was wondering, on the traffic situation, with Amazon and all the new development that's going on, could you just tell us how it's going to be working out as well in that area? Yeah, sure. So we have a discreet, very discreet entry point where it's one way into the site on Avenue A. Michael brought up the entrance. That's going to be the, the sole source of uh, traffic. And keep in mind, unlike a warehouse that you have in and out and in and out and constant mm -hmm. movement, we don't have any of that here. You show up for work, you get into the complex, uh, the trucks will stay there for either a day or several hours or three weeks or four weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be more of a closed concept with respect to traffic. Now, you will have the cars that come in, but they're, as Brian pointed out, there's two to 3,000 people, and there's over 2,100 spaces on site, give or take. And those folks are going to park, and then they leave for next shift. There'll be overnight filming. There'll be production work constantly. So we're going to be able to go into site with vehicles, and it's a direct shot in off of Avenue A. I'm sure you guys will work it out really well. Yep. As I said, if anything's needed, thank you. Oh, thank you very much for your feedback. It was great. We'll get your name afterwards, too. So. Thanks. Anyone else? Hi. Hello. Hi, my name is Patrick Kelleher. I'm the Hudson County Building Trades President. I'm the business agent, Plumbers Local 24. I represent the trades here tonight. The importance of meeting the developer, turn of construction, thank the mayor, the council, Jackie, all the council people in this opportunity, and me as the president and all the affiliates here and all the members are going to make a commitment to make sure that Bayonne people are beyond this project. We'll have job fairs and whatever we can do to help the mayor and the council move this project forward. Thank you. We built a union job. There's somebody out there in the audience that knows this. We built a union job about 20 miles from here through the pandemic without missing a beat. And it was quite a, quite a job. And the only way we did it is because we had union workers. So we're, we're, we're really into that. Anyone else like to speak? Well, listen. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Come on up. Uh, hi, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm Joe. Uh, I think it's an awesome project that you guys are working on. I think it's it'll really uh, help out the community. Uh, I myself am into film. I studied film in college. And I, I minored in film uh, alongside music, and I'm also very into the uh, production side as well. Um, I was going to ask if you guys had any other info on any possible jobs coming up, like as the as the projects. Um, progresses throughout the years. Yeah, sure. So, so as the job fairs open up, we'll announce them. We'll have them on NewJersey.com. And I'm sure the mayor's office will put out adv advisements. And I've actually made a commitment personally to the mayor and to ownership that if we don't have a proper job fair, Mike and I will be out there together making sure that the community is well contacted. Because that's what, that's what we want, is that good outreach. So, you know, give us your name afterwards. I'll make sure that the mayor's office has it. We have your name. All the union uh, folks in here, you know where your reps are out in the audience. And we really want to make this work. Awesome. Thank you. Come on up. All right, thank you. Uh, Mike Basigno, I'm with the uh, Bayonne Nature Club. 
and on the timing, on the uh, building of the walkway, would the walkway go up before you start the, instruction, uh, the construction on the inside, or what's kind of the time schedule on that? Great question. Thanks for your question. Um, the walkway would be built in two um, separate sequences. In order to construct the retaining wall that's required for the FEMA flood elevation, we'll be installing the piles concurrently with the retaining wall to construct the walkway. Um, getting the site up to grade and really public safety is of paramount to us. With the amount of construction activity going on on this project, again, we'll have uh, about 2,000 men working on this job along with equipment, steel. Um, public safety is of paramount uh, concern to us in the proximity to the construction. So while we will be, one of the first things going in, will it be the piles and the structural support to uh, create the walkway? We would probably um, hold off until sequentially the work along that area was complete so that we weren't putting the public in danger while all this construction is going on. However, one of the first things going in will be the piles and the supports uh, to you know, create the walkway. That was a great question. Great question. Anybody else? Anyone else? Yes, yes, sir. One down. Hi, my name is Frank Martok. Um, I just have one quick question. I looked at your overview. I don't see any access from the, to the water or airways. Do you have any plans for a helicopter or a heliport or a little waterway to get in and out? It is a peninsula. Thank you. Currently, the, the main access will be from the ground. I don't think there's any idea at the moment for helipads or waterway connections. Not, not at the moment, no. Another good question. Makes a lot of sense, but right now we we're foreclosed from doing that. Any any what else? Any other questions? Sure. Okay. Well, listen. I really want to thank everyone. Mr. Mayor's going to get up and just say a few words, and from that, uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. It was really great. So I just want to finish off um, by saying thank you to everyone here that participate in putting this all together. Um, to, every, to the unions, to the people here from Bayonne, this is going to transform our city. And this is what we set out to do eight years ago. And financially, we've taken this city from a brink of bankruptcy and have completely turned it around. And now it's time to bring the jobs back to the city of Bayonne. And this is going to be the cornerstone project that does that, along with the UPS site on the base. So Bayonne is going to go back to what it was. It's just going to be different the way it does it. So thank you all for being here today. And if anyone has any questions or anything, even on TV tonight, please reach out to my office because we're here for you. Thank you. I hope it was what you thought.